both the electronic codebook block cipher mode of operation as well as the cipher block chaining block cipher mode of operation are specified in the NIST special publication 838A released in 2001. The electronic codebook mode ECB is specified in chapter 6.1 where we can see that in order to encrypt a plain text the ECB mode simply applies the underlying block cipher encryption to all input plaintext blocks separately and independently, where each plaintext block is of a size appropriate for the underlying block cipher. Similarly, to decrypt a cipher text back into a plaintext, the ECB mode applies the underlying block cipher decryption to all cipher text blocks separately and independently. The cipher block Chaining mode CPC is specified in chapter 6.2 and slightly more involved than the ECB mode of operation. To encrypt a plain text, the first plain text block is XORed with a random initialization vector, with the result then encrypted by the underlying block cipher into a ciphertext block. Each plain text block following is then XORed with the previous ciphertext block with the result of this then encrypted by the underlying block cipher. Decrypting a ciphertext back into a plaintext then involves decrypting each ciphertext block and then undoing the XOR by XORing it with the previous ciphertext block, or in the case of the first ciphertext block, by XORing it with the initialization vector. In the demonstration following, you will see how I set out to implement these two modes of operation straight out from this specification by making use of AES as the underlying block cipher verified against the test vectors as given by this specification in its appendix F. In order to drive the implementation of the two modes ECB and CBC with AES as the underlying block cipher, I made use of the test vectors provided by NIST in Appendix F of the same specification. For the ECB mode, NIST provides a first test vector in Chapter F1 on page 24 with the 128-bit AES key provided at the top and a 4 times 128-bit plaintext with a corresponding expected ciphertext provided underneath it. The test is clear. The ECB encryption implementation, if provided with the plaintext and key, has to calculate the expected ciphertext, and the ECB decryption implementation has to recover the original plaintext if provided with the ciphertext and the key. Providing just two empty functions for the ECB encryption and ECB decryption, the test cases then failed as desired. 
For the CBC mode, NIST provides a first test vector in chapter F2 on page 27. With CBC, we additionally to the key, plain text and expected ciphertext also require to be provided with an initialization vector, which the test vector provides on the second line. The CPC encryption implementation, if provided with the key, the plain text, and now additionally also the IV, needs to calculate the expected ciphertext, and the CPC decryption implementation, if provided with the ciphertext, key, and IV, needs to recover the original plain text. With two empty functions for the CPC encryption and CPC decryption, the program was running with all the test cases failing as desired. This concluded the driver for my subsequent implementation of the ECP and CPC encryption and decryption processes.